what will be the new charge on a sphere after it has met contact with another charged sphere? Great, thank you very much for that question, Precious. Let's dive right into it. Now, this is going to be a little bit of revision from your grade 11 work. Although in grade 12, you might not necessarily have enough time to cover this again. As we said, we are going to be doing it here on the show for you. So that means make sure that you grab that book and the pen and paper. Let's get going. So starting off with, we are first going to take a look at the law of conservation of charge. And it's pretty much very similar to your law of conservation of energy, which you've already learned in grade 8. And that's stated that the energy cannot be created or destroyed it's just transferred from one form to another now let's quickly take a look at the law of conservation of charge and see how similar that actually is to our first law so it states here that charges cannot be created or destroyed but they will be separated and transferred from one object to another so that's exactly what's going to be happening in our case we're going to be having spheres rather that's going to be making contact and then we're going to have charges being transferred between these spheres but none of these charges will actually be created or destroyed so what we are going to be taking a look at is a little bit of an example just to get you right into the idea of what you need to do so first off we're going to be calculating the new charge on a sphere after it has been brought in contact with another sphere so i'm starting off here with a positive two coulomb of charge and here will be negative six coulomb of charge so you'll notice though it's two spheres they'll usually be placed on insulated stands which means that they won't be actually making contact with the ground and that will ensure that the charges stay in this case positive two and negative six throughout my experiment but now i'm going to take these two spheres and let them make contact with each other so as we said there's going to be a transfer of charge and they will then once they leave this contact position have a new charge all by itself so we are going to go and first calculate what will be this new charge after they've made contact Contact. Now this is not a formula that you'll find on your formula sheet. All that you're really going to need to do is you're going to need to take the positive 2 plus the negative 6 and we'll divide that then by 2 because we've got two spheres that made contact. That means once they've made contact and leave each other, each one of my spheres will be left now with a charge of negative 2 coulombs. So you would have noticed something unique about this. They both now have the same charge and that's usually going to be the case. They might have had completely different charges and nature of the charges, which basically means positive and negative signs before they made contact. But the moment that they've made contact and we take them back to their positions, they will always have exactly the same value that in this case is two coulombs and nature of the charge, which means in this case, both of them is going to end up being negative. So if we go back again to the original part though we've noticed so that they were in this case a positive and a negative charge and that meant that they would have attracted each other because we know that all positives and negatives attract but now that they've made contact they will always have the same charge afterwards that either means both negative or both positive which means afterwards they will always end up repelling each other good so let's quickly go and take a look further on what we can go and calculate from this we can also go and determine what will be the net charge that was then transferred between these two spheres. So now remember, we had a positive 2 coulomb that ended up being negative 2, and we had a negative 6 that ended up being a negative 4. So there was an amount of charge then transferred from the one sphere to the other. We're going to try to figure out now what was that charge. And once again, the formula that we're going to be using is not given on your formula sheet, so you're going to need to know this thing off by heart. So up until now, you've noticed every time that we did go and add up our charges we made use of the positives and the negative signs in the front later on when we take a look at coulomb's law then we don't do that anymore but for now usually those types of formulas that you do need to know of by heart you need to include the positives and the negative signs for so let's take a look at our formula which we need to know that means my net charge or otherwise my change in charge i'm going to be using the final charge minus the initial charge and i'm first going to just take a look at my positive two coulomb sphere we know that it was finally a negative two coulomb charge minus its initial charge of positive two coulomb and that gives me then a net charge or a change in charge of negative four coulombs so that means in this case it gained four coulombs of charge now we need to take a look at what was then lost by my other sphere so i'm going to do this whole calculation but just repeating it now with the negative six instead of the positive two if we do that we'll notice we're going to end up with exactly the same value the only difference is we're going to end up with a positive instead of a negative value that just means in the one case my 
negative 6 actually has transferred its charge when this case was 4 to the positive or the, yeah, the positive 2 that ended up then being negative 2. So once again you notice nothing has been created or destroyed. We're using exactly the same values from the one to the other one. Great. Now from here onwards we can even take it a step further. We can go and say great we now know the amount of charges that has been transferred but let's go and see exactly the amount of electrons that made up that charge. Now electrons has got a specific charge and this value is always given to you on the table of constant, constants at the back of your test and exams. Now that value is the same for either an electron or a proton. Remember that protons are the positive particles found inside of the nucleus and the electrons are usually those particles orbiting it. Now as we said the electrons they are negative and they will have 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 as they charge whereas the proton which is positive will then be positive 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 as they charge. Okay so once again we're going to need to take a look at a formula which we're going to need to memorize and this is basically stating the number of electrons is equal to our net charge which we've just calculated divided by the charge of a specific electron. So in this scenario we've had negative 4 as my change in charge as we went from my positive 2 coulombs to being negative 2 coulombs and then we said the change on charge of specifically my electron which is negative 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. Now you'll notice though that I'm using in this case a small letter Q instead of a capital letter Q. It's just got to do with basically the size values. If it is a bigger size value then we end up using a capital letter Qs. If it's a smaller size value like negative 19 which is very very small then we end up using in this case a small letter Q to indicate it. Okay, let's continue with our calculation. So we would have noted from here onwards that we're going to end up with 2,5 times 10 to the power of 19 electrons being transferred. So those 2,5 times 10 to the power of 19 electrons went directly from my positive, my negative 6 towards my positive 2 Coulomb charge. Great stuff. Now I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to show you if we end up with charges that's got in this case a different type of unit and that means we are going to need to know all the different types of conversions of our units. Unfortunately this is not given to you in tests and exams. You're going to need to know this as well off by heart. So let's quickly take a look at the different types of units that you can get. We can be given milli coulombs and in order to convert that for me to coulombs I'm going to need to say times 10 to the power of negative 3. This just basically means for you that you've divided it by a thousand. Then you can also have microcoulombs, that's times 10 to the power of negative 6, nanocoulombs times 10 to the power of negative 9, and pico, which is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 12. Great, so let's jump right into this little example where I'm having in some conversions that you need to do. So it says here the two metal spheres X and Y carrying charges of positive 4 microcoulombs and negative 8 microcoulombs are allowed to make contact and then separated again. Calculate the number of the electrons that was transferred between these two spheres. So first off, we're going to need to go and take a look at what was the charge after they've made contact, from there on which we're going to determine the amount of charge that has been transferred between them and then we can go and determine the number of electrons that was actually made up that specific amount of charge. Great, so let's start off with our first part and that's determining what's my new charge after they've made contact. So all that we're going to end up doing is we're going to add them up. Note though that I'm still using positive and negatives inside my calculation but I have to convert them seeing that they're micro to normal coulombs and we do so by saying times 10 to the power of negative 6 every time. And then once again we divide by 2 because there were two of them that made contact. From here onwards we will find that each of these two spheres are going to end up being negative negative 2 times 10 to the power of negative 6 coulomb. Great, so that means they've made contact, they leave always as we said with the same charge of in this case negative 2 times 10 to the power of negative 6 coulomb which means they will repel each other and now our next step is to go and find what was the change in charge. So I'm going to be making use in this case of my positive 4 which was my original value and then we'll see Seeing that it became negative 2, what was my change in charge? So from here onwards, taking a look at my formula, final charge, negative 2 times 10 to the power of negative 6, minus positive 4 times 10 to the power of negative 6. And that ends up giving me here a change in charge of negative 6 times 10 to the power of negative 6 coulombs. So that is in this case my change in charge. As we said, it will be exactly the same if I'm going to do it for my charge of negative 8 as it went then to our negative 2 value. Great, now we're going to determine in this case what is the number of electrons that makes up this change in charge. 
So if we're going to go this one step further, we'll notice we end up saying negative 6 times to the power of negative 6, divide by the charge of an electron, and then we're going to end up with 3,75 times 10 to the power of 13 electrons that ends up being transferred. Now sometimes if the calculation actually asks you to take a look at the change in charge of the negative 8 now to the negative 2, you'll notice that in this case you'll end up now with a positive value over there, which means a negative electron value at the bottom. Now do not worry about that because we can't have negative number of something. All that you're going to do is you're just going to state that value as a positive value at the end. How do I apply Coulomb's law to calculate the force? Great, thanks for that question. And it's a very important question as well. You're going to do a lot of these calculations, but later on. So first off, in order for us to be able to determine what we're going to be using, we need to say, what does Coulomb's law actually state? Now, let's take a look at that. It says in this case that the force exerted between two charges will be directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Okay, now this is quite a mouthful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be writing it down for you in some form and then we'll see a bit better what are we actually taking a look at. So we're going to talk about the force between the two charges that is directly proportional to the product between the two charges. Now remember that product basically means multiply and inversely that means for us divide by the square of the distance between them. Now what we can do with a relationship like that is we can always take away this directly proportional sign and then replace it with an equal sign and a constant. So let's take a look at what is the equal and the constant sign we will be replacing it with. So we're going to end up having force being equal to K, which is going to be my constant, multiplied by Q1, Q2, and divided by R squared. So this constant K will be given to you on your formula sheet. You would not need to go and memorize it off by heart. But also, the formula is still also given to you on the formula sheet. And that makes it quite nice for you. So that means basically all your definitions, you can actually cheat from your formula sheet because your definitions is basically a statement of your formula. So as you can see, force is directly proportional to the product of the two charges and inversely proportional to the distance squared. Okay, now something important about this though is when we're going to be substituting in our values, unlike we've done in our previous calculations, we always added in positive 4 and negative 8, we are not going to be including the positives and the negative signs anymore. You need to leave it out. What we are though going to be doing is at the end of the question when we've calculated the force, because force is a vector quantity, it has a direction, we're going to then say, okay, maybe it was attraction or it was repulsion, then depending on whether it was positive or negative, but we do not include include those signs in my calculation. Good. Now I'm going to take you through a little example so that we can see if we are able to go and do a question like this. So we have two metal spheres, P and Q, that's on insulated stands carrying charges of positive 4 nanocoulombs and negative 8 nanocoulombs respectively, and they are placed a distance of 200 centimeters apart. We need to go and calculate both the magnitude and the direction of the force exerted by each sphere on each other. So we're going to start off with our formula, which is Coulomb's formula, F is equal to K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. As I said, this constant will be given, it's 9 times 10 to the power of positive 9, and my two charges was 4 times 10 to the power of negative 9, remember I needed to convert the nanocoulombs to normal coulombs, and the same will go here for my 8, it's 8 times 10 to the power of negative 9. Now remember, they were actually positive 4 and negative 8, but we do not include the signs in my calculation. Now the next important thing is taking a look here at my distance. We've been giving it in centimeters, but we are never allowed to use centimeters. We need to be converting this to meters. Therefore, I've ended up dividing with 100. And remember that it still must be squared. So from there onwards, we found out that it's 7,2 times 10 to the power of negative 8 newtons. And we know that it will be attraction because they were originally a positive 4 and a negative 8 Coulomb charge that were in this case brought into contact with each other.